Hi, I'm Will from Link, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to invoice out of Zero Practice Manager. Now, there are a number of different ways to invoice from XPM, but what I'm going to take you through here is what I believe is the simplest process. It's going to allow you to send your invoices to your customers with the least amount of editing, and it's also going to ensure that you do get some really tidy reporting. Now, there are two main ways we can invoice out of XPM. One is to create an interim invoice. The other one is to create an invoice that is associated with the time and costs on the job. So when we create an interim, we're creating an invoice that is not associated with any of the time and costs. When we close our job, we're gonna take those interim invoices and we're gonna allocate them or apportion them to all the time and costs on the jobs, giving us a, a write up or a write off, depending if we're over or under on our billings. The other method is invoicing the individual time and costs. Now this can create a problem if we have a whole lot of tasks and we don't necessarily want to show those on the invoices. So what happens, we end up editing the values in all of those tasks. The problem this creates is we start incorrectly apportioning the revenue to the time on those tasks, which means all of our reporting falls over. This method I'm going to show you here, we're not going to have any issues because we're just going to take a blanket apportionment of the revenue across the time and costs on those tasks, giving us accurate write-ups and write-offs on our staff and also on the services that we delivered. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to first you take you through the integration, then we're going to go and raise an invoice on a job and see how this flows through to zero. So let's jump in, we'll check it out together. So here I am in Zero Practice Manager. So if I go to business and down to settings, on the right hand side we have zero. This is where we set up our integration. Now I'm just gonna gloss over most of this. The thing I want to focus on here is under invoices, include invoice description. We wanna make sure that's checked on. And then under details we have job or miscellaneous invoice total. By default, it's probably set to in individual tasks and costs, which means we're gonna get a list of tasks and costs arrive in zero, which is not what we want because that requires a lot of editing if the task and cost information isn't what we wanna show our customers. So we wanna go job or miscellaneous invoice total, and in here you can edit what you want to show. I just wanna have the job number and the job name. Another thing is client order number and uh, job description. You may want to include those as well. My preference is to not include them, but again, totally up to you. I've just deleted them out of here. So when you jump in, you'll find that those two other options are sitting here. So we wanna set up our integration again. This box needs to be checked. We wanna choose job or miscellaneous invoice total and then define what we want in here. Don't worry too much about miscellaneous invoice description because we don't send miscellaneous invoices from XPM because they impact our reporting. Right, once we've done that, head to the bottom and hit save. Perfect, so let's jump into one of our jobs. So if I go to jobs, I'm just gonna pick one from my list here. Let's just go for this 2022 annual engagement for 10,000 feet limited. So what we can do is go to financial and we're going to go to new progress invoice. Now what we can do is we can choose the actual time and cost. What that will do is it'll bring through the actual time and cost on the job and then we can invoice those line items. That could work if we want to uh, be allocating our write-offs at an individual level, but my preference is to come down here and put in the total amount that we want to invoice. Let's say it was $3,000. Then we can put anything we want in here. Let's just go invoice and then hit next. That invoice line is not gonna show up on our invoice. And I'll show you that in a moment. So you can see it just sits down here as a cost. Although it's here as a cost, that's actually an interim invoice. That's not gonna be invoiced as a disbursement. So we're gonna go edit invoice now and then we're gonna put in our description here. So we are going to say uh, for there we go, so what we've got is for the preparation of annual financial statements and tax returns for 10,000 feet limited, David Dickens and Cheryl Dickens. So what we can do now is hit save. And very simply, we just hit approve. What that will do is gonna send the invoice through to zero for us. So if I jump into blue zero now, and hit refresh on my draft, so I should have a draft invoice in here, to 10,000 feet limited, click through, and you'll see we've got this beautiful paragraph description here that's come through uh, from Zero Practice Manager, my job number and my job name here. And then I can very simply approve and send it off to my customer. Just to see what it looks like as a PDF, I'm just gonna have a quick look now. There we go, let's open this one up. So as you can see, a nice wee invoice there. This has been a custom invoice template that's designed, but you can go and customize these in your Zero, of course. 
So that's my advice on invoicing out of Zero Practice Manager. So the key thing there is we're updating our integration to send a paragraph description based on the invoice description, and we're gonna be raising interim invoices rather than invoicing the individual time and costs. What that will do is it's gonna make sure that we get nice reporting because we're gonna have interims washed up against that time and cost once we close the job out and do our whip wash up. And we're also gonna ensure that we'd have not a lot of editing in Zero like we'd have under the time and cost method. So I hope that was useful, and I'll see you in the next video.